Over many years, I've been blessed to work with children and teach them in different capacities, whether it's religious ed or as their teacher in school formally and in homilies, which you recall before COVID, I used to invite the children forward to sit together and have an interactive kind of dialogue, preaching or homily experience with them. And I would teach the kids the theology of the body, age appropriate, of course. And with the littlest ones, I would tell them how God teaches us about ourselves and him through the body. One of the issues was the question of listening. I tell the kids, how many ears did God give you? They look and they feel, and they go, two. And how many mouths did God give you? And they, one. God gave you twice as many ears as he's given you a mouth. That's because he wants you to listen twice as much as he wants you to speak. And notice you can shut your mouth, but you can't shut your ears. And then they'd actually try to do that, squinch their face, and it was quite funny and entertaining. But they realized, I can close my mouth, but I can't close my ears. I should always be listening. In today's first reading, the book of the prophet Samuel, uh, Eli has God call him, uh, but he thinks it's Samuel. And so he runs to Samuel. Uh, you, you call? No, I didn't call you. Finally, when Samuel directs Eli and explains it to him, Eli realizes that it's the Lord calling him. And so when he heard the voice of the Lord a third time, he said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. It's hard to listen. It's hard to listen today. There's so much shouting back and forth and tension and anger and everyone wants to get their opinion in and people really just be quiet just so that they can prepare a response to what the person's saying and we don't ever really listen to one another. I think that all begins with prayer. Oftentimes prayer can become uh, creating God in our own image and likeness. We worship a Jesus that we're comfortable with, a Jesus that we construct in our own minds, a Jesus that does not challenge us and cause us and call us to grow. Uh, we listen insofar as we hear what we want to hear. But authentic spiritual listening requires a complete openness and receptivity to the truth of the faith and the love God has for us and how he wants us to grow. As you know, in the stages of prayer, there are the vocal prayer, the meditative, and then contemplative. The highest form of prayer is really just all about listening, sitting in the silence, knowing that we're loved and being loved and listening to the Lord. We say little, God prays through us, and we're just there to be receptive to hear him. If we can practice that in prayer, uh, then we can practice that easily with one another. It allows us to hear what they're actually saying, not what we want to hear, or we're not silent just because we're preparing a response, but we wanna hear them out. In the gospel today, John the Baptist's disciples hear him say, behold the Lamb of God. And when they heard him, they follow Jesus. When we listen, we follow Jesus. When we listen to others with love, uh, we can imitate Christ. And when we listen to the truth, we follow Jesus. Sometimes we're worried that when we're listening in prayer, uh, how do we know whether it's really God's voice or my own or a figment of my imagination or just me creating my own thoughts of what I want to believe? Well, we go to the Catechism of the Catholic Church and there what we think and believe uh, and what comes up in prayer should conform to the church's teachings and traditions. If they do, praise God. If they don't, we need to listen more and grow to hear the Lord speak to us. There's a, a powerful gift that comes with learning how to listen. It's not easy and it takes years of practice. Therapists call it uh, attentive listening. It's something I had to practice with great frequency and, and effort uh, in the hospital. When I was newly ordained, I had studied so much theology. There's so much I wanted to say in my appointments. And so I would suck on a candy or put something in my mouth to make myself shut up so that I would listen before speaking. There was just so much I wanted to say, so much I had learned, so much I wanted to share. And it took years for me to learn to listen. Oftentimes, God can do so much with someone who's just simply able to listen with attention, with empathy, uh, with, with uh, love. And that's certainly true in prayer. When we listen to the Lord with attentiveness and empathy and love, um, God uses us and we're transformed. And so we do that with others just the same. Because John's followers listened to him and heard him, just as we're called to listen and hear the Lord challenge us to grow, and to expand our horizons and understandings and overcome our shortcomings and vices for the sake of virtue and holiness and happiness, uh, then we follow Jesus. They follow the Lord. Lord, where are you going? Come and see. And when we're listening attentively and effectively, and that's confirmed by the church's teachings with the conclusions we come to from listening to God's voice, then inevitably 
we invite others. We're able to recognize Jesus when the people we listen to point him out because they're speaking the truth in love, challenging us to grow. And then we're able to go and invite others. I, I love uh, the Johannine example of the calling of Peter. In the other Gospels, uh, it just simply says, like Mark, Jesus calls Peter and Andrew who are fishing and they followed him. But in John's Gospel, Jesus calls Andrew, who had been a disciple of John the Baptist, and then Andrew goes and gets Peter and tells him, we have found the Messiah. And because of Andrew, Peter becomes a follower of Jesus. And of course, as we know, the first Pope or Vicar of Christ on earth, you are rock and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. All because Andrew called him to come and see the Lord. I invite you in the weeks ahead to consider inviting someone to come to our search program online or in person that starts on January 25th to learn to listen in prayer and to allow ourselves to be formed and fashioned, uh, fashioned like clay in the potter's hands. And that in learning to listen to the Lord in prayer, we become better listeners of, with empathy towards others. Happy Second Sunday of Ordinary Time, and please let us all pray that we listen better. Listen to the Lord and to one another, because he is love. And where there is love, there is God. God bless you. <music>